Welcome back everyone. Now that we've completed our theoretical development of electrostatics and magnetostatics independently, although they're very similar, now we get to see how they play together. Starting with the electromotive force, i.e. what is the force pushing the current through whatever conducting surface or material that you have. Alright, so our first question here states, Two concentric metal spherical shells of radius A and B respectively are separated by weakly conducting material of conductivity sigma. A. If they are maintained at a potential difference V, what current flows from one to another? B. What is the resistance between the shells? C. Notice that if B is much, much greater than A, the outer radius B is irrelevant. How do you account for that? Exploit this observation to determine the current flowing between two metal spheres, each of radius A immersed, in deep, immersed deep in the sea and held quite far apart if the potential difference between them is V. All right, let's go ahead and draw it out. So we first see our diagram for the first two parts. Um, we see that the spherical shells are concentric, little a inside, big, and then b outside. And then for the second part, we have a ship with two of these conducting uh, spheres and separated by a large distance deep in the water. Pretty cool. All right. So what we need to know for this is Ohm's law. You may not have seen it like this, but the current density is equal to the conductivity times the electric field. Again, it's the electric field that's going to be responsible for driving the charges and so that the how well they drive it is based on the conductivity but the way we normally see it is V equals IR and we will use both all right so a for the solution if we let Q be the charge on the inner shell then from Gauss's law we know we have the electric field of a sphere 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over R squared R hat in the space in between them and the potential difference is well V to VA minus VB is just the integral from uh, negative integral from uh, B to A, and then the line integral of uh, E. All right, so chug that through whatever it leads, and we see that Q equals four pi epsilon naught times one over A minus one over B. We've seen this before, okay? But the current then is well, if we want the current, we have to integrate the uh, current density, okay? And that's along the area that it's moving, okay? Clearly, we see that we can plug in. Uh, via Ohm's law that J equals sigma E and then we shove that through and then we see that sigma being a constant Gets outside the integral and we're left with the integral of E dot DA Which of course we can reference to Gauss's law is equal to Q over epsilon naught Okay As you see we have these things the potential above and the current both being related by Q all right, so not totally unexpected. However, we unite the potential and the current via the charge, and that's how we see here. So let's solve the potential difference for uh, the charge Q, and we do that algebra, and then we plug it into the equation for I, and we see instantly a lot of cancel, a lot of things canceling, okay? So then we simplify this to four pi sigma VA minus VB over one over A minus one over B, so you kind of see here that the current is related to V, but how? Okay, let's see. From the second form of Ohm's law, we see that V equals IR. So solve this for R, we get V over I. But V is that potential difference from, uh, so VA minus VB over I, which we just found in part A. And we see that R is equal to 1 over 4 pi sigma times 1 over A minus 1 over B. Okay, so that tells us that our proportionality is geometrically dependent R changes with our geometry. Kind of figured that. And we, of course, we kind of figured that with conductivity, the R would change too for several reasons. Blame the material scientist. All right, but for C, for large B, where B is much, much greater than A, the second term is negligible. Okay, clearly we could see as B gets very big, 1 over A minus 1 over B, will, that 1 over B will go to 0, and then you're just left with 1 over A. So hence, we see that R is equal to 1 over 4 pi sigma A. Essentially, all the resistance is in the region right around the inner sphere, okay, because that's where the charge is. Successive shells, as you would go out, contribute less and less because of the cross-sectional area. 4 pi R squared gets larger and larger. 
for the two submerged spheres, then r is equal to 2, because we're doubling them, 4 pi over sigma a, so that simplifies to 1 over pi sigma a, so 1r as the current leaves the first, and 1r as the current converges to the second. Therefore, i is equal to v over r, and we just simplify that through, which yields 2 pi sigma a r.